Hi, I'm Peter Tragos, host of the Lawyer You Know podcast and YouTube channel. The saying goes, everyone hates lawyers until you need one. Well, I'm here when you need one to answer your questions and give you insight that you didn't know you needed. Along with my partners, Pete Sardis, the professor, who has a finance and business background, and George Tragos, my dad, and the conciliary, a criminal defense giant, we can answer any questions you have. What's up, everybody? We're back at it today, talking Dev V Heard. Yet another day has gone by, and we're another day closer to ending this case. Um, it seems like things are moving much more quickly, abbreviated witnesses, getting out just relevant information, which is what I appreciate and like to see in a trial. Um, we are going to talk a lot about the trial today. We'll talk about the testimony, obviously, but there are three parts and three things that happened during the trial today that we're going to focus on because I got a lot of questions on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to follow me on there, at Tragos Law right here is my handle. Um, we get a lot of questions on there. I tweet kind of throughout the day when I have time because I haven't had time to go on Legal Bites um, or any of the other lives throughout the trial over the last few days just because work's been really busy. I had a mediation and a bunch of meetings and stuff going on at work. It's just been really busy, so I haven't been able to get on there. But I'm still... Uh, listening to most of the trial on two times speed, as you know. Um, and so I haven't been able to make it on the lives, but I've saved a lot of my comments for here. And a lot of questions have come around Depp's motion to strike. I did a short just explaining it really quick, but we'll dive into it a little bit more tonight. The second part is Mr. Knight, that rebuttal witness from the um, trailer. I can't remember trailer paradise or something. I can't remember what they called it, but the uh, the trailer place that he owned, why they asked him questions outside the presence of the jury before putting him on the stand. Um, so we'll talk about that. And then lastly is all of the information Amber's lawyers read at the end of the case that basically was kept out, but they still wanted to read it into the record. So we're going to talk about why. We're going to talk about what some of that was. Um, and we'll get into all that. As always, we are going to recap and go through every witness. I see people asking a lot of questions about, yeah, the trailer palace. That's what it was called. Um, the A lot of people asking for Jennifer Howell. We will talk about her um, and all the other witnesses. And yes, prayers to the families um, for the lost children and loved ones in Texas. I don't I haven't gotten too many details about that, but I mean... Brutal, 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 sad. No words really can um, can make up for what happened there. So really, really sad. Um, and, you know, if there's any legal aspects to it, obviously, you know, we'll cover it. But as it sits right now, there's nothing really to say about that except, you know, how heartbreaking it is, um, what happened to all of them. Um so we will talk about the case today. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, take a second and subscribe. Um, like the video if you haven't already so that other people that may be interested in this content will see it pop up on the YouTube algorithm and they will come over. Um, I also appreciate all the members. I see a lot of them in here uh, making comments and we'll answer a lot of questions and stuff at the end after we get to the recap for the rewatch crowd. They like to hit the recap up front. If they want to stay for the questions, I think a lot of good analysis comes out there. Um, but if they don't want to, then at least the recap is in the beginning. So we don't have to, um, you know, drag on about it if, if people don't want to listen to the recap. All right. So here we go. Motion to strike. Beginning of the day, Amber Heard's team rests, which means they have no more witnesses, which is good because they, and look, we're getting new members again already. Uh, because they don't have a lot of time left and they weren't going to call Johnny Depp. And my suspicion was that they just did it to make him nervous kind of throughout the trial that he might have to retake the stand. Turns out we're, we may never know why they didn't actually call him in, or in uh, their case in chief, but they did rest, which brought forth the moment for Ben Chu and Johnny Depp's team to file a motion to strike Amber's counterclaim. They made all the arguments we've already discussed on this channel at length, that there is no evidence really connecting those statements to Johnny Depp. They're are no, there's no evidence of agency, no evidence of actual malice, no evidence that uh, Waldman even knew that the statements were false when he said them, no evidence that Johnny Depp ever saw or ratified these statements uh, prior to them being posted. 
all of that to me leads me to believe that no reasonable juror could, people are asking where to subscribe in the info um, on the page. There is a subscribe button there um, in the video info. Um, so the, the, in my opinion, there is no reasonable evidence that a jury or no reasonable juror that could find for Amber Heard in her counterclaim. But as we said throughout, I didn't expect ever the judge to actually strike this counterclaim. If she was going to, she would have done it in the pretrial period so that um, this would have never come into trial. Because once it comes into trial and once the jury hears arguments on it, um, it would be so prejudicial to strike it at this point and say, oh, we're not going to actually have you decide whether or not what um, – Johnny Depp's lawyers said was a lie. And we're not going to make you decide whether or not them calling Amber a liar was right or wrong. And that would be horribly prejudicial at this point. We've already gone through this a lot, so I don't want to waste a lot of time. But I do want to say a couple of things. Number one, Rottenborn says he objects to Ben Chu and says, Judge, once again, he's arguing for eyes outside the courtroom, meaning arguing for us, for the cameras, for the public. And I posted on Twitter, that's the pot calling the kettle black because then Rottenborn gets up and argues exactly how he should judge light most favorable to the non-moving party, which is Amber Heard. You have to um, deny the motion to strike, blah, blah, blah. Legally speaking, it's such a high bar and it's so unusual that these get granted as we've spoken about before. But then he says, oh yeah, and the UK found Johnny Depp was a wife beater. Has nothing to do with this motion to strike has nothing to do with this part of the process at all, has not come out into evidence at all. But he says that for our eyes and for our ears and for the public who may be watching or listening. That's really the only reason that he would have said that. After he has complained multiple times about Ben Chu doing that, he did it himself. Then we hear the judge read that the counterclaim is going to the jury. and. I say read because she has already prepared her ruling in this order that the counterclaim is not going to come before the jury. And because of that, she didn't really take into account the arguments. And that's not that big of a deal. And it's not unusual. Judges do that all the time where they've read the briefs and they said there were, there were briefs um, on the case, which are on this argument, but they still want to make their oral argument fine. But the judge already made her decision that she was going to let this stay in. She made it pretrial. She wasn't surprised by any of the evidence. A lot of it was video played depositions. So it really wasn't that surprising that the judge made this call. So not that big of a deal in the motion to strike, but that's why it happened. It always happens at that point. It doesn't mean that there's this new huge thing that happened in the case. And that's why they're asking to strike it. It always happens at this point in the trial and almost always gets denied. Even though in this case, I actually think that it was, something that should have been struck. <laughs> no, good point. Industry, okay. John. All right, let's get to rebuttal, which was something that we were all really looking forward to because this is the point in the case where you can really score some points if you're Johnny Depp. You know what her team is going to say, and you'll notice throughout rebuttal that a lot of times there was not nearly as many um, impeachment processes with prior statements and depositions and things that these witnesses already said. And there's a reason for that. When you depose these witnesses, it's a discovery deposition. When you set up their trial testimony or their cross-examination, you look at the deposition and you figure out what questions are good for you and you use them and you have the um, statements uh, that can impeach them and you impeach them as they go. Um, See so you, yeah, stay strong. Um, but here, because they're responding to your evidence and your witnesses, a lot of times you don't know what they're going to say. We saw that a lot today, that there were some unusual comments and statements made. There wasn't a lot of impeachment. It was kind of more of a trial lawyer reactive process, which I think is really fun and is kind of my favorite part about being a trial lawyer, is reacting to what happens, being think and improv and quick on your feet. So you don't see as much impeachment. You don't see as much expectation of what you think this person is going to say or you're, you're um, thinking ahead, knowing what's going to come out of their mouth and being able to object. There was a lot less of that during rebuttal, which I think is really interesting. 
Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is Hamada. I think his last name was Hamada. I, I a lot of these names I just kind of put titles for who they were. Um, so the Warner Brothers, the DC Universe boss, basically testified that Amber never lost her contract with Aquaman or Aquaman Two. She's been paid everything she's owed so far. She will be paid for whatever she's owed in the future if she's, you know, depending on how much she's in Aquaman 2, if there is an Aquaman 3, things like that. Um, Jason Momoa and Amber Heard had no chemistry, and it took post-edit magic to make it appear that way in the movie that they actually had chemistry. And when he asked about, well, how can you really tell if somebody has on-screen chemistry or not? And they say, or and he responded, it's kind of like, What's it take to make somebody a movie star? You just know it when you see it. That's what on-screen chemistry is like. So I thought that was not great for uh, Amber Heard's team to talk about the fact that there was no on-screen chemistry. And the Hollywood expert before, or the the next Hollywood expert, Mark, said he was surprised that this Warner Brothers boss actually said that because that's something that usually stays behind closed doors. But he thinks he was just telling the truth because he was under oath. He was objected there because it was bolstering the prior testimony. But I mean, that's true because that's not something they usually admit that man, our two stars didn't have very good chemistry because that's not great for his film, which he's trying to make money on, but he's just trying to tell the truth. But the biggest point, I mean, obviously those are all big points because I thought he was a huge witness for Johnny Depp and crushed Amber Heard's damages. But the biggest point here, as he said under oath, and he was totally credible no bone to pick with either side. If anything, he should like Amber Heard because he wants her to win to look good so that his movie does better, I would think. So his financial interest would be in Amber Heard um, coming out looking good and smelling like roses or whatever that is, whatever that saying is, um, at the end of this trial. But he said, nothing Johnny Depp or Adam Waldman said has affected nor will it affect Amber Heard's contract with them or Amber Heard's placement in the Aquaman series. That's crushing to me. So not only did she not lose her contract, which impeaches some of what she said, but nothing that anybody on Johnny Depp's side said affects their decision. That crushes Amber Heard's damages altogether. But there's more coming to crush those damages. But if she doesn't have the Aquaman damages, what does she really have? If she is still going to be an Aquaman, which was supposed to be her big stepping stone up in her career, if she's going to have those stepping stones, then how is their defamation? How is their damages? So I think he pretty much crushed those. Then we heard from the hand doctor, who I also thought was absolutely credible because whenever somebody says, I'm not really sure, so I'm going to say I don't recall on this. Um, He didn't give either side anything. He called it a partially hard, partially soft cast. Um, He was very smart and knew where they were going and when they ask questions about, oh, look at this mess with all the clothes things flipped over. Could Johnny Depp do that with the hand that was in the cast? Maybe, maybe not. I don't really know. Could he do that with the hand that was not in the cast? Obviously. So he's like, yeah. And then when they asked him another question to follow up, they were like, he, he even answered it before they asked it saying, because he was anticipating. It. He's like, yeah, I guess he could do that with the hand that didn't have the cast on it. So he knew exactly what they were going for. But he did say that, you know, he did all this treatment on Johnny Depp's fingers, but what he didn't say, which I thought was made it not a home run for Johnny Depp, is he didn't say how he hurt his finger. He didn't say that this was an injury with a bottle crushing his finger. He didn't say any of that. So they never really got that testimony and evidence. And I don't really think he contradicted Amber Heard's hand specialist that much. I really don't. He didn't say, oh, if you look at the injuries on the finger, you could tell this is how it was injured. All right, next was the forensic accountant. He was one of the multiple witnesses that just talked about how horrible Miss Arnold was. She got crushed on the stand today, and so did Dr. Spiegel. But he said that future pay is usually based on past pay, and he looked at all of Amber's tax returns from 2013, and she's never made $50 million in her life. So there's no way that you could predict she was going to make $50 million in the future. And then he also said that Arnold's testimony is totally unreliable, and not adequately adequately supported by anything. Not great when you're an expert. But then, one of the bigger experts of the day, Richard Marks, came back. And he's never looked like more of an expert and looked more more worth $975 an hour than when you compare him to Miss Arnold, in my opinion. Um, And he just came out and smashed her. 
I mean, just took shots and nuked her testimony. He said things like, there are lawyers like me who do this and have done this for 50 years. And this testifying thing is a very small part of my practice. And then there are people like her who talk about it and want to be consultants and get paid for talking about it. But they would never say what she said because they know that's not how it works. If you go in to renegotiate something and you just say things and you don't have anything to back it up, like you don't have actual numbers about how these comps, sure we use comps, but we don't just say this person's a comp because I want them to be. We say they're a comp because of what they've been in, how much they've made and how much we expect them to make on the next movie. That's what makes them a comp. And she had nothing to compare these people with Amber Heard. He said they would never renegotiate that deal with Amber Heard because WB had the, because Warner Brothers had the option, not Amber Heard. She's not the one who even had the option. And she's nothing like the stars that she was compared to because she's not the title character like Captain Kirk in Star Trek, like Aquaman, like Wonder Woman. Those are leads. And to be compared to Zendaya, who's been on Disney since she was 13 and goes by one name, which says a lot. A lot of people like that quote. And I agree. They shot way too high at who they were trying to compare Amber Heard to. Then he took another shot where if you believe, Miss Arnold, that Jason Momoa's agent broke confidentiality, then fine. And then he finished his direct with, her opinion is not worth the paper it's not written on. Which was a dig that she didn't even have anything to write down. She had no evidence. She had nothing to build on. On Cross, they basically got out the fact that he's never negotiated a superhero contract. If I was him, I would have talked about the Sly Stallone movies and been like, he was a superhero to me. I would have gotten semantical with them and been like, yeah, what are you talking about? Sly Stallone's a superhero. This guy's a superhero. He kind of did that a little bit, but not, at, not as far as he could have, but it wasn't a big deal. I mean, big deal. He hasn't negotiated superhero contracts. So what does that mean? Superhero contracts are so different from everything else. Come on. And then uh, Amber's lawyer was sparring with him a little bit and it finished and it ended on a question that was objected to. Actually, he objected to Marx's answer to his question, asked the judge to strike his answer, which was very bad for Amber Heard's side. The judge said no. And then he just said, okay, no further questions and sat down, which is the big no-no. You cannot end cross like that. You got to have something better to end on. Um, and then again, Marx talked about how he was surprised that the Warner Brothers exec said that about the chemistry. And he also made shots like meteoric rises don't happen to supporting actors and big time actors don't have to test for parts. Uh, and, and Amber had to test for parts. So he took some shot, shots at her there at the end. Then you had Mr. Banya, the Q score expert guy come back. And he testified that he was so much more confident, so much more direct, in my opinion, and came off so much better throughout this portion of his testimony where he was just crushing Schnell and Howell, or was it Howell? Not Howell. Uh, Schnell and Arnold saying that none of this makes sense. The Q scores they compared him with are so much better than Amber Heard's Q, Q scores. The bad Q scores for Amber Heard are so much worse than all these actors they tried to use as comps. These spikes do not correlate at all. The biggest spike happened before Adam Waldman tweets even happened. None of this makes any sense. There are way too many variables. She couldn't possibly correlate these damages with the tweets. And that's all great and good. And he did crush her. And I agree. You can't correlate any of this stuff because there's too many variables. However, he also kind of crushes his own damages testimony for Johnny Depp. And I've said this and I'm consistent about this the entire time. Some of Amber Heard's did this as well, but shooting these shots back and forth about speculative damages, about how certain things are or are not written or the unwritten rules of Hollywood. They're both trying to use them in their favor and against their opponent. And to me, a lot of these just kind of cancel each other out. And this is one. That's why I said, I'll give them pirate six, but any of these other, you know, Q scores and damages and things like that to me, are very difficult to connect and correlate. That, that's tough for me because it's literally the same argument he made. At least that's how I felt. All right, so the next couple witnesses, I think, because we've got Mr. Knight next, 
then Dr. Shaw, and then Howell. Okay, so I think these were the three witnesses most people wanted to talk about today. Um, so let's start with Mr. Knight. And one of the big questions I got was, why did they do these questions? Um, why did they do these questions before he took the stand? Well, a lot of you astutely asked me if all the rebuttal witnesses were sequestered. And I said, if they knew they were going to be a rebuttal witness, it would be smart of them to sequester them. If they didn't know they'd be a rebuttal witness until Amber Heard's case in chief, then they'd have to see how much of the trial they listened to or saw and whether or not they could be a reliable witness. Well, that's exactly what happened here. So apparently one of this guy, Mr. Knight's old employees, um, reached out to Johnny Depp's team, gave them Knight's phone number. Johnny Depp's team reached out. Knight had some contradicting evidence to the night where they partied outside the trailer palace. And when asked if he would testify, he said yes. So he shows up, but he saw some tweets. He responded to some tweets from Tug, that umbrella guy, which is hilarious. He was on Nick Mercado's stream with me early on in this trial. Um, and he was just cracking up laughing while they were talking about him on the live stream, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and so I thought that was funny. So he had heard a little bit about this trial, but once he talked to Johnny's lawyers, he stopped looking at stuff. Okay. And he basically sequestered himself. So they had to figure out and they had to ask the judge whether or not he should be allowed to testify based on what he knows. And he basically said he didn't know anything until somebody reached out to him and he heard they were talking about Hicksville and that was his spot. And he posted, that's not how I remember it. And that's basically what he said. He didn't really give any more information than that. They talked about his version of the events. Um, he said Amber was the one acting jealous, not Johnny. And that's kind of where we stopped and the judge decided to let him in. So he leaves, he comes back in and we go through direct and direct is pretty smooth. He runs the Hicksville trailer place, trailer palace. Um, Johnny Depp was awesome. Everybody wanted to hang with him. Amber Heard was jealous and annoyed. He wasn't spending as much time with her. So she came over a few times. De Depp was really triggered and got quiet and shut down after she kind of snapped at him. Um, Depp and Heard were both drunk, but Heard definitely seemed drunk when she went at Johnny Depp, but it was based on, Mr. Knight's own opinion and experience with domestic violence. Objection, sustained, but the jury heard it. Can't unring the bell. Then if you want to talk about some annoyances, Camille was asking did questions that were not leading. But I don't know if we can blame Elaine at this point because I think the judge is the problem with leading questions. The whole what, if anything, that everybody wants to laugh at Elaine the judge thinks these buzzwords at the beginning of questions do make a difference and they're the end all be all because if she hears a did, she's going to sustain for leading, which is incorrect. And if she hears what, if any, kind of sounds like she's not going to sustain a leading objection. And Camille even eventually after trying over and over again to do it different ways, ends up going to the what, if any strategy and it works. She literally just changes the did to the what, if any, and it worked. And I'm just thinking, oh, this is so bad. But Eventually, she got her questions out. Uh, Amber was nasty to Johnny. There was not a ton of damages. He only had to bill Johnny's assistant $62 to fix two light fixtures. That was it, which is a far cry from how all of Amber's witnesses described the carnage and chaos that happened that night. And I thought he nuked their testimony, made them seem totally unreliable. And some of the witnesses I actually thought did a good job for Amber Heard now have this totally unbiased, eh, Maybe I'm going a little far saying totally unbiased, but a guy in closing, I'm going to say, we didn't know this guy existed. Uh, somebody connected us because he was also there. We didn't call him in our case in chief. But once Amber made up this whole story about the carnage and the abuse, whenever we found out somebody else was there that is not best friends with Amber, we want to call that person. This guy's not best friends with anybody. You heard him say that. And he came and testified very differently than the biased witnesses that Amber Heard called. That's what I'm saying in, in closing for sure. On cross, you never know how this is going to go because Elaine didn't get to depose this guy. Johnny Depp's team was able to talk to him. So they're able to kind of go through direct. So a major advantage for the team that's actually calling this witness. This witness. You're a pretty big fan of Johnny Depp, aren't you? You wanted to testify at trial, didn't you? He was like, No. And I'm thinking like this guy knew about this for how many years and he didn't reach out. And now he reached out. If he was really a fanboy and really wanted to help Johnny Depp, he could have, he could have done this a long time ago. 
you seized the moment, didn't you, with all the eyes and all the television um, uh, coverage this is getting. That umbrella guy got you here. The lead Twitter guy for Johnny Depp. I was like, what? Like, what? What are you talking about, Camille? You follow that Twitter guy or a different Twitter guy called Johnny Depp fan. He's like, no, I don't. Now, I've heard he actually does, but he said, no, I don't at this point. Thank you, Roberta. I got a little Uhtred of Bebenborough look going tonight, if anybody watches Last Kingdom. Then, even for Elaine, this was mind-boggling. You tweeted and responded to Tug, that umbrella guy. That didn't happen. Amber was the one acting all jealous and crazy. Elaine not only read that into evidence, she entered that tweet into evidence. Yeah, he commented at one point when he was trying to look at some of the other tweets or people on there. This looks like schizophrenia or something. That was kind of a, an interesting quote. Um, and then during Cross, she basically said, oh, you're saying you don't follow that guy? You're saying Johnny Depp drove himself? When did you say this was? May? But you weren't with him the whole time, were you? So these things where she was intimating that he was lying, but she didn't really have anything to impeach him with, so it kind of fell flat. Then on redirect, Camille again went through the fact that, did you call Depp's lawyers or did they call you? Did you want to be involved in this case? Did you want to come testify? Why would you want to do that? He said, I just want to tell the truth. And when I saw things that were coming in that were not true, I wanted to come set the record straight, basically. How do you feel about being here? I think Elaine was, or I mean, Camille was expecting him to say, um, I didn't want to come do this, but instead he said, I'm happy to say what I saw. I don't really care outside of that. All right, next up is Dr. Shaw, the psychiatrist, the rebuttal expert for Dr. Spiegel. I can't think of an easier expert that I would want to rebut um, than Dr. Spiegel. So basically he said, oh, Industry Rajan, I should have known you were a Last Kingdom fan. Uh, fate is all. Um, so he flat out says it right off the top. Dr. Spiegel violated ethical obligations of a psychiatrist. He violated the rules of the APA. There's literature on this that explains to us exactly how to handle this and the Goldwater rule, and he violated it. This is actually more unusual than you would think. To come out and flat out say that someone that's similarly situated, a, a similarly situated doctor did something that was unethical under oath and on national TV is unusual because those are firing serious shots and those could have serious ramifications. He spent, said Spiegel's opinions are totally unreliable and Goldwater absolutely applies to opinions. He said, you can give testimony without interviews and there's published literature on this, but it limits you. And you could say something like, it's possible somebody could act like this, but I wouldn't know for sure unless I interviewed Johnny Depp to confirm that and to do psychological testing. So it makes you think, why did the judge let Dr. Spiegel in? Why did the judge let Dr. Spiegel do all this stuff? He called Dr. Spiegel a liar. There's no really other way to say it. He called Dr. Spiegel a liar. And he said that was an unfortunate statement by him. He was trying to be kind, but he smashed Dr. Spiegel. On cross. Yes, destiny is all. I love the Uhtred fans in here. I love it. I love it. So on cross. You have no opinion to Johnny Depp's like psychology or no diagnosis. Correct. Experts have been excluded for the Goldwater rule. Correct. You've been an, you've never been an expert or written any articles on the Goldwater rule. Correct. The court authorized Dr. Spiegel to testify. This was misleading and a misrepresentation to the legal process. This is another, I, I hate saying I have issue with the judge because I actually think she seems awesome. She seems like, a straight shooter, honest, keeping things on track. She's got a military background. But to let them argue about decisions the judge made before the trial in front of the jury and allowing them to mislead the jury on it, 
like the evidence that didn't come in, inadmissible evidence, the experts that didn't come in, hearsay and how it seems unfair the jury can't hear hearsay, what they're entitled to do. So the, the judge lets basically the cross-examiner make it seem like the judge authorized Dr. Spiegel and allowed him to testify. So therefore that ratifies his testimony. And then on redirect, they come back and say, well, actually the judge determined that Depp didn't have to do these interviews. This is why if the judge makes these decisions, it should be off the table to argue in front of the jury because it is not a jury question. It's not something the jury should consider or is going to make a decision on. It is a, a legal decision that the judge has to make as a matter of law prior to the trial. And this stuff coming in is just misleading to the jury. And I hate to see it. But let's get to kind of surprisingly the most asked about testimony in the chat. And you might have asked about it a lot. And destiny is all for Whitney Hurd and Jennifer Howell because their paths are crossing again. But this was the one I told you I was most excited about because this was the one piece of information that I accidentally looked at, looked at when somebody sent me on Twitter that was outside of the court. I've been focusing on just what's coming out in the court, as you all know, if you've been following from the beginning with me, because I want to look at it like a juror. And I want to see how they could possibly make this decision and what a reasonable juror could decide. Well, I happen to know that Ms. Howell wrote a letter basically saying the way Whitney um, Heard described the stair incident was a lie. And she told her it was a lie. However, that did not come out at trial. Unless they put the letter on the screen and didn't show it to us, the viewers, the actual email slash letter did not come out. What did come out? Whitney Heard lived with her. She was Whitney Heard's boss. She met him at Pineapple Express premiere. Never saw Depp hit Amber. Depp isn't paying her legal fees. She is. She's not biased towards Whit or, uh, towards Amber Heard or towards Johnny Depp at this point. She feels no loyalty to either side. But she did get a check for $250,000 on behalf of Amber Heard. Amber Heard really likes for people to give checks to charities on her behalf. But that anonymous donor happened to be none other than Mr. Elon Musk who just throws $250,000 checks around like they're candy. And I think that was brought out to show maybe they tried to buy her off, buy off her testimony. <laughs> I love, I love the last kingdom quotes. I love it. So then they ask, why did you write this letter? Because I was torn about how I felt about this. and I felt the truth needed to come out. I didn't want Whitney to do what was wrong and not tell the truth. But what truth? Basically, they let her say Whitney lied, but what did Whitney lie about? We didn't get into that content at all. She was asked, did Adam Waldman help you write this email? She said, absolutely not. And then they got in a little jab about how at a different deposition, they had to cut off the deposition because Whitney Heard's side was, was nasty to her for an hour or something like that. But no email. So people are saying the letter is in evidence, the email is in evidence. I haven't seen it. I'll just say that. I have not seen it. They have not read it. So if they bring it up in closing, great. I think they kept the letter out at this point. I think they said it was hearsay and I don't think it's coming in. Because if it was going to come in, it would have to come in with Jennifer Howell. And they weren't, if they were going to bring it in, they would have to bring it in there. And why wouldn't it be hearsay? Potentially because it's just for impeachment purposes, not not for the truth of the matter asserted. So I'm going to put this on the screen. Court TV said the letter was going to be given to the jury. Court TV also told us two different times that Johnny Depp was going to testify. Court TV also told us that the judge decided that Adam Waldman was an agent and his statements were going to be taken as Johnny Depp's. So I don't know. And I'm okay saying I don't know. But if I'm a juror at this point, based on what I've heard, I don't see the letter. And that's all I'm going to say. If it comes in, great. And I hope we hear about it in closing. And I guarantee we'll hear about it in closing if it comes in.
Interesting, Ron. Yeah, I don't know what other people really said as much today. I didn't follow what other people said as much today as some other days. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the TMZ stuff. I don't know a ton about it, but I've heard people talking about it. We can talk about what that actually means. Then they finished with the children's hospital person, which I got to be honest, had it on two times speed. It was really quick. I think basically the point about that was Amber didn't pay the money. She did her pledge. And some, I think Elon Musk, again, donated $250,000 on Amber's behalf. But, you know, she didn't pay the money she promised to pay, basically, at the end of the day, which we all know she didn't do that. Um, so just more impeachment there. But I think that they are hitting singles and doubles all day in rebuttal. And I think they hit a home run with crushing Arnold's testimony with multiple experts. But the rest, they're still getting singles and doubles just saying, that's not true at Hicksville. That's uh, Whitney lied about something. This isn't true. That's not true. Hitting these little parts to say, this is totally inconsistent. And what they said is not true, which Amber was not able to do with Johnny and his witnesses during her case in chief, I didn't think. All right. So we finished 30 minutes early because of scheduling. But the judge said that 30 minutes was going to be charged towards Johnny's team. But even after that, I feel this way sometimes, Melanie, just like Uhtred. So Johnny Depp's team used about five hours today. And Amber Heard's team about an hour and 15 minutes. So Johnny Depp's team has approximately 10 hours left over the next three days of trial. And Amber Heard's team has about three hours left, which is, if you do quick math, on average, one hour per day versus over three hours a day for Johnny Depp's team. So they have more than three times as much time each day as Amber Heard's team is going to have, which is very interesting. And if you add that all up, 13 hours, so, you know, 12 divided by three is only four. So if we have, or wait, is tomorrow Wednesday? Two days left, two days left. An hour and a half a day, excuse me, because Friday is just going to be closing. So an hour and a half a day for Amber's team and five hours a day for Johnny Depp's team, which means we're only going to have six and a half hours of actual trial time. So I think the next two days are going to be pretty quick. And, you know, it's going to feel a little bit for, uh, more fast-paced. If people are saying quick math, yeah, thank you. And I, I screwed it up even with the quick math. Um, but, yeah, so I think it's going to feel a little quicker and, and faster paced like I did today, which is good. I enjoy that, kind of getting stuff up, getting stuff down. If you haven't hit the like button yet, hit the like button on the uh, video you're watching right now so the algorithm can push it out and other people can come and join us. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. So let's talk about what a proffer is. The first podcast I ever started maybe six years ago, because I used to love podcasts, so that's kind of what I did for a long time before. I, I've done YouTube for about a year and a half now. But I did podcasting for a lot longer earlier, just for fun. Um, maybe it wasn't six years ago, maybe three or four years ago. But it was called Peter's Proffer. <laughs> Get it? And the reason for that is a proffer is an offer of proof. So you understand the alliteration there of proffer. Thanks to Andrew and all the new members jumping in. We've got some members-only merch coming. And we're going to do some special things with the members for everybody that has joined. Um, but a proffer and an offer of proof is basically letting the judge know what evidence would come out if it could come out. And there are a couple different scenarios you do this. The first is if you have an expert or somebody that's going to testify and the other side objects to it. Well, the judge will say, why don't you proffer and tell me what it's going to come out? And the lawyer will just summarize and say, judge, I'm going to call this doctor and this doctor is going to testify about this. Um, and, and you know, they're going to testify about that and about this. And then the other side can make their objection and the judge makes the decision as to whether or not that's actually going to come in. The second way is what they did here. Evidence or objections the judge has already ruled on that they want to put on the record for appeal. And so they read, I wanted to call this person for this reason. This was the objection and this was the decision the judge made. And they want to put that on in case an appellate court says that is reversible error. You win the appeal. We get to go do this trial again because the judge made the wrong call. But there's a second reason why they want to do it. And it's exactly what they 
accused Ben Chu of doing. I think they wanted to read this doctor and this nurse and this person and that person would have testified that Amber Heard revo- reported violence, reported abuse, reported that she was scared of Johnny to all these people. But what we call that is bolstering and self-serving hearsay. You can't have other people come testify to what you said back then to make it seem more true than if you just said it on the stand. So that's why a lot of this did not come in. There were two that were a little more interesting than others to me. You have to wait and see what the uh, members only merch is. The first is the police expert, the DV calls, what they're supposed to do. We didn't get in detail because there was a whole book on it, basically. So we didn't read the entire thing into um, the record. But they talked about this in opening. And I thought that the female officer that they called was the DV expert. It turns out it wasn't. They had a different DV expert that they're not going to be able to get into. And that sucks for them because the female DV expert officer that I thought as a juror was the expert was great for Johnny. So that's really tough. No, I got it, Ron. I I took it as a compliment that minds can differ. The second thing that wasn't allowed to come in that he read about was the UK judgment and admission of the judgment itself. And it's interesting. They were trying to use it for exactly the reason that I mentioned yesterday. When you have two defendants Let them point the finger at each other. Amber's team wanted to point to that UK judgment and say, Johnny also accused them for all these same damages that he's accusing Amber for at this point. And therefore, do you really know or is it all just too speculative? And they, of course, wanted to get in the fact that he lost. There were some super chats that came on before I started. Um, that we didn't save, but they were about Amber, Amber, uh, Jennifer Howell's testimony, which I got to. And then somebody want to say, Spiegel don't know Jack. So we got that out, out. All right. So we are about to get to the questions now. So if you have any questions, throw them in here. We'll be picking a bunch of them uh, to answer in the remaining time that we have. I'll get to absolutely as many of them as I can. Um, yes, I want this, Cassandra. I want this. We're talking about it. We're making it because I am a big fan of justice. Um, only 3000 likes and 12,000 people in here. Let's get that up a little bit. Uh, Casey Curry. So we'll take this real quick to do a, a little spiel about our firm and our page. Um, we are a personal injury law firm. We handle car accidents, slip and fall, wrongful death, catastrophic injury cases, medical malpractice, nursing home negligence. And then we also do criminal defense in the Tampa Bay area, all across Florida, Um, And we handle cases in other states as well, depending on what it is. So we also are a real law firm. We take real cases. We get cases from YouTube. Tragoslaw.com is our our law firm's website. You can email me, lawyeryoukno at gmail.com. If you have a case like that that we handle, we'd be happy to help you with it. Um, We also hit 100K recently, which was fun. And I promised I would dress up like Jack Sparrow. Since people say, you know, with the hair and things, I guess I resemble him a little bit. So we are going to... Um, do that this weekend, I believe on Saturday. Um, but we have some fun things coming. I'm getting a lineup of guests to come in and talk about um, different things. Talk about this case. Talk about, you know, do a 100K special kind of. So that'll be fun. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already because it does help us out. Um, and that's it. That's it for the spiel. Let's get to the comments. Patricia Savage, am I the only person that got cut off from Amber's ex-roommate testimony? I think I think you're talking about Howell, and I think that you didn't get cut off. That just was the entirety of the testimony. Kenny Yang, what advice might you give a trial lawyer who feels themselves starting to panic at a loss for words during court? So there's a couple things you can do. First, slow down. Go very close, uh, very slowly. You always have to have things prepared, right? So you can look down to if you do freeze a little bit. Say and have it by section. So you can just jump to another section if you want to and say, okay, let's let's move on to your actual treatment or whatever it may be, okay? So you have kind of a, a fail safe there. Number two, can I confer with co-counsel? 
gives you a second to walk over to the table to say, I'm, I'm losing it a little bit. Where was I? You know, give me some notes. Where, where can I go from here? Right. You can always ask for a break if it's really bad and you're having like a panic attack. I've actually seen that happen to a lawyer I was against in a case. And I was like, yeah, let him take a break. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do to slow down the process. Nobody's going to hammer you over it. Um, especially if you have an understanding judge, you should be fine. Unless the judge is kind of a jerk, then you could be in trouble. Devin's Law, what's up, buddy? Can you believe they didn't use Howell to impeach Whitney? Because it was hearsay, maybe? Or did they just use to get her witness statement in? I don't know. I'm honestly at a loss for what the point of Howell was at this point. Um, if they got the letter in, then I get it. But if you got the letter in, why would you not read it at that point into evidence? Why would you not show it? If anything, you could show it and talk about it, but then not enter it into evidence if it is really just impeachment or rebuttal evidence. And it's not actually a piece of evidence that needs to go to the jury. It's just there for impeachment. So to me, it would have been more likely the other way around than what people are saying that we didn't read it or talk about it, but it's definitely going into evidence of the jury. I could be wrong, but I, I don't know. I don't think it was well presented to all of us listening and watching. Isidoro Morale. If Amber Heard runs out of time before rebuttal close, can they still cross with no time left of their own? It depends on the judge. She may give them like nominal time, like five minutes to cross, or she may just say no if she wants to lay the hammer down. My guess is she's going to give them a warning when they get like under an hour and say, you will not have any extra time, so use your time sparingly. That's what I would do if I was the judge, so I don't have to give them extra time, but I also don't have to make it an appellate issue. Industry Rajon, wow, Peter, not a lawyer, but isn't it kind of nuts for Amber Heard's team to admit a tweet uh, which the Hicksville witness calls Amber Heard jealous and crazy. Uh, yeah, you don't need to be a lawyer to pick up on that one, obviously. Natasha, will Jennifer's declaration be available to the jury? Does not seem like it to me unless I missed it coming in. Trinity, reading up on Peter and seeing that this man has strong faith. This is a huge blessing to all of us. Let's all bless this man with a small tithing so he can spread some additional awareness other than legal work. Hint, hint. Thank you, Trinity. But you can... Give your tithes to your church. You don't have to give your tithes to me. I love the support. I love answering the questions. We'll have a lot of fun together. Um, and I appreciate this super chat. Thank you, Trinity. Devin's Law. I rep the Sandy Hook victim parents against the school. We lost on appeal at State SCOTUS. Wow. That's impressive. That's, that's, that's a rough run, but good work. Terry W. Do you really believe Johnny never abused Amber? I I didn't say that. I don't think I've ever said that, actually, Terry. Um, I, I would say that they had a toxic relationship. And if I had to bet my life, I would say that they probably both did things to each other that they regret. But I will say that the way she has given her testimony in this case really makes it hard to believe her and the kind of the monster she described, which is why from day one, I've said, even when I did the mock closing, if she would have gone with a simpler defense, that when he got drunk and nasty, he backhanded me or he squeezed my arms or he headbutted me. He calls it an accident. I say it wasn't. That to me is more believable, but she didn't say that. So if I'm looking at this legally and I've got to pick what the evidence shows, the evidence does not line up with what she's saying, in my opinion, if I was a jerk. But I would not say that I know for certain that Johnny's never abused Amber. No way. I don't think I can say that. Bev with a big one. Our ranch is outside Uvalde. My daddy was born and raised there. Go Coyotes. I'm wrecked. A donation in their name. I'm a woman of strong faith and ask those who believe to hit your knees. Thanks, Peter. Bev, I, it reminds us we're in a broken world and a lot of people have problems and dealing with problems can be tough. This is, this is just the worst, you know? I mean, it's a difficult thing that nobody should ever have to deal with that, you know, we as a country and a society are dealing with more often than it seems like we ever have. Um, it's really sad. I mean, I have two kids that go to school every day. Um, so I, I really, I can't imagine. Thank you, Bev. Autumn Klein, who of the witnesses that testified today would you say was the most beneficial to JD's case? It's hard for me to pick one. I would say the hand surgeon wasn't that beneficial. The forensic accounting got his point across, but wasn't the best witness. Howell definitely was not the best witness. So I would say maybe it comes down to Marks. Um, Marks, the psychiatrist, I can't remember his name, and um, Knight, the guy from the trailer palace. All three of them were very strong for Johnny Depp today. Dance 415. Peter, did you notice that Amber Heard started hugging all of her lawyers after JD hugged Camille? Also, Ben Chu is finally talking more, earning that 804 an hour rate. I did not notice that. E. Giuliacci, do these motions to strike count against their time left? No. 
Sarfin WSL. I hated that the defense always said Depp Waldman comments. Why can they do this even though there is no proof JD is involved? The judge is letting them because uh, Depp's team at this point is objecting. Now, they let him get away with it a little bit more yesterday. They're objecting more today, but it seems like the judge is letting them. To me, that's an argument, and you can say that in closing arguments. You shouldn't be able to say it throughout the trial. Listream, took my night meds this morning, Seroquel and Gabapetin. Uh, slept all day, didn't know the effect that much. Can see why Johnny fell asleep a lot. Interesting. Industry Ray John, same witness said he was triggered by Amber Heard because he was a survivor of emotional abuse. Yes, this was before another reference to emotional abuse trauma was stricken from the record. Can't unring that bell though, yes? No, you can't unring that bell, but it was, it was the objection was sustained and his testimony was struck, but the jury heard it. Mr. Nuke Fiener, I made a joke yesterday in poor taste about it, Sam Waster, Waterstone's death. I apologize, but I still stand by Ben Chu's resemblance to law and order fame, Sam Westerson. Have a great evening. I didn't know who Sam West Waterstone was, but now I understand who he was. Don Marie, why bring in Catherine Arnold, knowing there was already a depot of March of 2022, Warner Bros, Walter Hamada, that contradicts everything Catherine claimed. They had to have somebody. And they had to have somebody come and actually testify to damages is my only answer I can think of. Sarah Van Tunen, should Ben remind the jury that we are having this trial because the judge said Johnny didn't have a fair chance to share his evidence? No. I think it's important after Rottenborn's argument this morning. No, he's not going to make that argument, I don't think. Autumn Klein saw a video of Amber arguing with one of her lawyers. Looked like she was upset over being exposed today. Katie Lihildal. Did Jen H's letter get admitted into evidence? I didn't see it. No move after Depo to add to it. If not, was Johnny's team doing to make the public find for Cope Opinion? You are not so hard to look at and have made me smarter. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Um, I, I don't. I did not think the letter came in. But I do think there's an element of, is the jury going to go look this up when they get home? It almost seems like both teams are, are reserved to the fact that they are. So maybe they want to put Jennifer Howell's name in there, put the fact that she wrote this letter, and maybe the jury's going to go home and search it. I hope they don't. That's unethical. Um, but it seems like there's, being, there's a lot of intimations to the jury. Luis and Iria Amaro Poventud. Why the testimony of Jennifer Howell was so short and they didn't mention she knows details and truth about Amber Heard lying. It must have been kept out by the judge. That's all I can think of. Lisa Wett, did you hear Elaine call Johnny Mr. Heard today? Yes, while questioning Trailer Park Guy. That witness was easy to like and seemed credible. I agree. Nash, they're all calling forensic pathologist. That's why he didn't comment on how the finger, what sustained the injury, I believe. Could be. Ashanti Feebles, hey, waiting for you all day. Elaine called Johnny Depp Mr. Turd. If AH sues EB after loss, do you think she may actually win? TMZ filed emergency motion to source isn't outed for cabinet video. So the TMZ stuff that I've been hearing is they're trying to stop their own employee from giving up what they call privileged information about whether or not they own the rights to that video in the kitchen and how they got it. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Luis and Iria. What is meant that JD's team, it was moved to strike Amber Heard's counterclaims. Does this affect JD's team or benefits Amber Heard's team? They just tried to strike the counterclaims, which they always do when the other side finishes their case in chief, and they lost like they do 99.9% .9 of the time. Beverly LM, she might not be in the sequel at all, so why would he care if she wasn't, wasn't in the movie? The movie, Wang stated, was believed two friends, PW and Jason, uh, Mira wasn't a big star in the movie, correct, which I thought was really interesting that he kind of gave away part of the plot to Aquaman too. Natasha, I heard that proving perjury is difficult and not usually done. So what incentive is there to be honest under oath? Well, you don't want to commit perjury, that's for sure. Merrill Willenberg, AH experts no good because AH account not believable, potentially. Tragic Mouse, if this is hard for us to understand, how will the jury? I agree with you. Some things are going to be very hard for them to understand. Ahmad Waggy, Pirate 6, as well as Fantastic Beast, at least. I don't know. Shalom Flores, that sounds like schizophrenia is by far my favorite testimony thus far. Crafty 10, why Hamada says no chemistry with AH and Mom Momoa? She endured wrath per op-ed. She keeps throwing shade. This is the best way for WD WB to address. They paid her, and now they find a reason to take her out of Aquaman 2. Least amount of bad PR. 
I still was surprised he admitted he didn't have to admit that. Makes me think maybe he doesn't like Amber Heard. Kareen, not Karen. Johnny not using any other thing than Pirates and two independent movies that would have made him 50 million. Pirates was 25. The other two were independent. He lost money from it. Lorraine Denisi. OJ jury deliberated four hours after 11 months. That's true. How long do you think this jury will take on a Friday holiday weekend before returning full-time working? You're right. I thought it was going to take more than a day. I thought it was somewhere between one and three days. That's kind of what I've been saying. But I could be totally wrong. It could be an hour. They could be so sick of this. Raider fan Keith. I've heard after trial ended today that the Twitter user Johnny Depp fan or whatever was not banned. That at the time he acknowledged he had changed his handle to that at some point. Very interesting. That's the other thing with social media. We're acting like this stuff is provable and scientific. Hashtags and tweets and handles. Like you could change your handle every single day. One day I could be Amber Heard fan. One day I could be Johnny Depp fan. So what does that prove in a court of law? And I think it's very clear that some of these lawyers have no clue how it works. Very interesting to me how what this will happen in future cases. I, I don't think this would happen in any jurisdiction I practice in. K. Rab, the trailer guy did not follow a Depp fan account. Some account he was following changed it to the name of Depp fan to try and make him look like he was biased. People watch should happen. TMZ owns the copyright, and the only person who could give it to them is heard. How are they protecting their source? I think they're saying it's privileged. K. Rab, sorry, I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah, this is exactly what I just answered about the Twitter handles being able to be changed. DJ Somatics. How do they choose which seven of the nine jurors make the final decision on this process open to any tactics or trickery from either legal side? Congrats on 100K Sparrow time. Yes, it is. Um, I don't know. It would be crazy if they did it like the Rittenhouse course, uh, court did where they just kind of pick names out of a hat. Every case I've ever tried, it's the first seven that are the actual jurors and the last two are the alternates. So we'll see. Ashley Deal. Elaine made herself look very scared and aggressive with her relentless attempt to discredit and silence Knight. Um, even trying to find out if he was going to testify during the voir dire bad look. I, Maddie, why not point out to the jury that Mr. Knight was last minute surprise witness so they know Amber Heard was caught off guard with her well-crafted lie? Is that against the rules? Um, no, they did. They let him know the first time he learned about this case was May. Um, he, Johnny Depp's lawyers reached out to him. I think they did kind of create a timeline as to when he came involved in the case, but maybe not enough for the jury to pick up on it if you didn't pick up on that, potentially. Crafty 10. Judge allowed it to be stated that the court decided no Spiegel eval because Amber Heard's team keeps saying JD didn't cooperate. Yeah, but it's really been confusing, I think, to a jury um, who doesn't have people explaining it to them how that entire process worked. MLC. What if the trial ends as a hung jury? What happens next? A mistrial, and they'll have to do it all over again if they want to. Necrotic. One of the law tubers said that they can't technically run out of time. If they do, they'll still have minimum three to five minutes or more for a rebuttal. And that could be true, but I think if I was the judge, I would give them serious stern warning before they actually ran out of time. Regarding Howell, would the email be been hearsay without Whitney validating it? Didn't want to call Whitney up again? Potentially. I mean, I, we didn't hear exactly why the judge kept it out. Rachel Moss, is it possible to check Fairfax County government website if Howell's letter made it into evidence? I saw other people talking about it on Legal Bites chat group. Uh, it's probably possible to, to look it up, but I, I haven't seen it. Dronescapes aerial photography and videography is a new member. Industry Rajan, the conscious psychologist. So will the jury get an instruction not to include the UK trial info? I don't think they'll get an instruction about it, but... We'll see how much it comes out in closing. What's the difference between bolstering and bringing in a witness? Bolstering is the only purpose of the testimony or whatever you're trying to get in is to say and build up something that's already been said. So it's basically saying, did you, do you swear you're telling the truth? Um, are you sure? Did you tell the whole truth? Do you swear on your mother's grave? That would be bolstering. Sorry, I'm gonna itch on my back. That would be bolstering if you're saying like, or if, if I say something and then you call my sister to say, yeah, Peter always tells the truth. He was telling the truth when he said that. And then you call my mom to say, Peter never lies. He's always telling the truth. And then you call my wife. To, that's just bolstering a witness and bringing up what they say. They can come and testify to their own observations, but they can't just build up what somebody else was saying. Bringing on witnesses is just calling a witness to give testimony. You can build a case, but you can't bolster a witness. Just one. I'm supposed to be writing a paper, but you've got me glued to your recap. You're killing it, bro. Thanks, just one. 
There's always time later for your paper. This is educational. Uh, Mega Million, no question, just showing support as a new member. Thank you, Mega Million. Glad you're here. Taylor Pasternak, LOL, you resemble Orlando Bloom more, but hey. Bruce Parker, how will the verdict be formatted, a category or a nuanced statement? Could it be something like, we do not find that he's an abuser, but demand no money paid either way? No, they'll have to find in favor of one or the other, and then what those damages are. So I think there's going to be, I've seen the uh, draft of the verdict form. Hopefully we get a real one before it's over. Um, and there are multiple questions for the jury to answer, which is usually how it is. <clears throat> like, do you find that Amber Heard publicized these statements? Do you find they were made with actual malice? Was Johnny Depp damaged as a result of these statements? And then how much are his damages? Something like that. Robin Rogers, do you think Amber Heard genuinely thinks she's winning? Probably. Pikachu, my mom loves your show. Can you please say, hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Thanks. Sh Shallon Flores, Emily Baker was very surprised that they tried to enter the experts designation into evidence. What is the de designation? And is this common to ask? So like the fact that he was designated as an expert, um, to me, that depends on the jurisdiction. Sometimes judges allow them to be qualified as expert. Our jurisdiction sometimes doesn't do that. You just ask them the questions and then you allow them to answer expert testimony with their, with their opinion. But the judge doesn't actually qualify them as an expert all the time. Sometimes they do. Shelby Schnur, can you go over slash give an opinion on TMZ trying to block rebuttal witness? Emergency motion to protect is on Twitter. So I'm trying not to read those outside motions, but I would say, if TMZ doesn't want one of their employees to, to comment on something, they can say it's work product or it's privileged or it's trade secrets or whatever it may be to try to block them from saying that. And it'll be up to the judge as to whether or not they'll be allowed to testify to that. E. Guliachi, love your channel. Could they end before Thursday over based on time left? What happens then? Do they get to closing early? So I've mentioned this a couple of times on maybe other channels, but I think it's possible they do end early. But I think if they go into Thursday at all, and if they end on Thursday, what they're more likely to do is say, let's just stop, do some housekeeping matters, we'll close on Friday. Because I think they have two hours each on Friday and they're gonna wanna have that time to prepare and the judge should give it to them after six weeks of trial. Noxie, TMZ wants to block a JD witness due to potential uh, breaks journalists' privilege and confidentiality of sources. Mystic, thank you for the super chat. Curleen Remy. How can this be a fair and honest verdict if the jury has been denied hearing important evidence? I, I think you're, and this is why this, the lawyer should not make arguments like this. The jury is not missing important evidence. They're missing inadmissible or inauthentic or unreliable evidence. There's a big difference. There's a reason a lot of things don't come in. Um, just like the court uh, TV reporter heard the judge said something and reported something and it was inaccurate even though she was saying what the judge said because she was reporting it for the truth of the matter and it wasn't in fact the truth. That's what can happen with hearsay. We can't let a lot of evidence in if it's inadmissible or inauthentic or unreliable. And I think that's what most of the evidence is, at least according to the judge, that's not coming in. Elaine Pulakidas. Steph Morris, thanks to the super sticker. Ahmad Waggy, will the merch be shipped internationally? Yes, I think the answer to that is yes. I haven't tried, but I think so, yes. Uh, the... Link to the merch is in the description of, it might not be in this video, but in other videos. Carrie Barton, I'm sorry I'm not understanding this court talk. So is Johnny doing good or not? I feel like he had a bad day. He looks stressed. I think he had a good day. They lost the motion to strike. That's not a big deal. I think overall he had a good day today. Absolutely. I think rebuttal is going to be strong for him. Stephanie Mason, I thought they asked JH to view the email on the screen. They did. They viewed it and they talked about it. And why did you write this? And when did you write this? And Adam, did Adam Waldman help you write this? but we never heard exactly what the this is that she wrote. Sophia Kim, is it okay for Elon to send hush money on Amber's behalf? Are there any potential consequences for this type of action? You would never be able to prove it's hush money. He was donating to a charity, to a good cause, on behalf of Amber, and that's all it ever officially is. But if the jury wants to infer that it's more, that's their prerogative. Jennifer, what's your opinion on TMZ seeking an emergency motion to protect the source of the kitchen video? It seems to me, I don't know why they would care. I don't know why they would try to block it. Are they Team Amber maybe? I, I don't know. Because to me, if it happened, it happened. Let them go testify to it. But maybe they think it will hurt relationship in the future with other people selling them videos. I don't know. Mandy Bishop, what was Jennifer Howell talking about at the end being attacked by who? 
To me, it sounded like she was accusing Amber Heard's lawyer of badgering her at the last depot. And she's like, I'm not standing for that. I'll cut this off. I think she had a lawyer with her based on talking about their, her legal fees. But basically, I think they may have cut it off because they were harassing her in the last depot is what it sounded like to me. Jacqueline Stickney, thank you for the super sticker. Chris Davis, new member today. If Amber Heard's team runs out of court time, would it be possible for JD's team to bring a witness immune to cross, confused on how it gets deductive? Thank you. So I think they would have to give them a minimal amount of time, but I think what's more realistic is the judge to give them some warnings before they get to the end. I don't think the judge is going to let witnesses go up there and not be subject to cross. Angela Carnazzo, singles and doubles can win the game as well. Absolutely. Just takes a little longer. I agree. Do you think D's team has used time as a strategy? Potentially, but they didn't seem worried about losing 30 minutes. So Sarfin made the plunge into the membership. Michelle Woods, why are witnesses not allowed to have notes, but lawyers are? I saw one of the witnesses on video was told to remove whatever he had in front of him. So there's a difference. Witnesses can have notes. They just have to show them to the lawyers. And if the lawyer cross-examining them wants to look at those notes and use them to cross, they're allowed to do that. Now, the difference is if you're taking a video depot, I'm not able to look at your notes, so put your notes away. If you need to reference them, let me know, but you'll have to let me know in detail what exactly you're referencing. So it's just fair that you can't have little cheat sheets unless the lawyer's allowed to look at them. Zachary Heater, smash that like button, please. Yes, we've had 12,000 consistently here in the chat. I'm sure we have at least 12,000 likes. Tiana A, Hicksville tweet is in because it has JD's video attached to it. And the witness has just claimed that he had seen only one video of JD's security. Ash Elizabeth, from a lawyer's perspective, knowing the ins and outs, what do you think? Who do you think has the better lawyers doing the better job as pre presenting their case, Amber Heard or Johnny Depp? I would say Johnny Depp. I don't think Amber Heard's lawyers are incompetent, but I think Johnny Depp's team seems stronger as a whole. Luis and Aria, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. 2 Corinthians 2.14 on your bookshelf. Amazing. Thank you. Cindy, can you let me know what your scripture verse behind you is? Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. I don't know if these were starred like this or if they came in like this, but Cindy literally asked what the inscription was here right as the other person posted it. So that's wild. Now you know, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Sandy D, thank you for your sincerity and compassion discussing a trial about domestic violence. You're welcome, Sandy. Brian McCloy, McLeod, greetings from Chicago. My dad was born in Chicago. Do you think Depp will win the public opinion and return to Hollywood regardless of the outcome of the case? Do you think the same thing about her? Love your channel. Thank you, Brian. I definitely think Depp is. I think we're in for a redemption story line of movies potentially coming out for him. I think in a few years it could settle down for Amber Heard and she could come back potentially, but I think immediately the response is not going to be positive for her. Melanie Cassio. I've got 20 plus years in pharmacy and Dr. Spiegel's depictions of those meds were so wrong actually offensive to me. Interesting. He didn't even seem like he really thought himself an expert on those pills. Um, Francisco Othen. I was a juror where this woman was suing Ford for a rollover accident. They didn't disclose to us that the woman had already sued the tire company. Why are they able to disclose the UK trial and the outcome in this trial? It's unusual. And usually we can keep this stuff out about other cases and other trials and other lawsuits because it's not relevant as to whether or not Ford had a product liability because Ford could have a product liability and the tires could have. But something you may not know also, Francisco, is if it's a jurisdiction like Florida, whatever verdict, let's say they did have a lawsuit against the tire company and they claimed similar damages and they got $100,000 and then they sued Ford and Ford, you guys gave them a million dollars. Well, what you don't know is after the trial is over, the judge would reduce that million dollars buy the $100,000 that the tire company already paid and Ford would only have to pay $900,000. That's called a set off. And the judge does that at the end as to not confuse the jury to try to parse this out. But instead, we already know what the tire company was liable for. Now we're finding out what Ford's liable for and the plaintiff can't collect twice on those same damages if in fact they're claiming the same damages or similar damages. Danielle Peterson, I missed yesterday's live, but congrats on 100K. And thank you to your wife for staying up late and hanging with all the super chats. Shauna Brennan, matching for the sake of the families and yes, hitting my knees. Thank you, Shauna.
Tyler Davis, can I buy merch if I swing by your office? Um, we don't have the lawyer you know merch like this at my office, but we have the Trago Stars and Tragos t-shirts. And if you swing by our office, absolutely you can have a Trago Stars and Tragos t-shirt. Uh, no spoilers. I'm a JD supporter, but I think that's some good cross from Rotten Born were quite good. What do you think? Go, Johnny, go. I think some of his cross was good, but I think overall they smashed a lot of the experts that Amber Heard's team brought. KDO. I believe Johnny never hit her. However, I believe all women is strong. Johnny may have actually lose this case, but restore his career due to public opinion, giving the true details of the case. Brittany Watts, jury deliberation fast equals good or bad for Johnny. I think good. I think if they just had enough of Amber Heard at this point, it's good for Johnny if they go in and go out quick. But you never really can tell. Sarah Kernagis. If Johnny Depp's team wraps up rebuttal and Amber Heard's team has left, can they call their own rebuttal witnesses? Not unless it is just based on their counterclaim and they have new new witnesses to rebut what Johnny said on just her counterclaim, but she ain't going to have time left for that. Lone. What if Jennifer Howell is coming in person too? I don't think that's going to happen. Is that possible for her to testify tomorrow and Thursday? I don't think so. I think the judge would call that cumulative at that point because they had the opportunity to get this info and they didn't get it. But it's possible because she's a rebuttal witness. But if she was going to come in person, I don't know why they would play the deposition testimony at all. It seems duplicative to me. Beverly LM. My daughter was in an accident and I posted pics from the accident. Her lawyer asked her to tell me to remove them from Facebook. So if you do remove them from Facebook, it depends on where it is. But in Florida, I'll just say, if you remove them from Facebook, you have to download and save that they were on Facebook because you can't change that in anticipation of litigation. And you do have to provide that to the other side if they ask you for those photos in Florida, at least. Ivory. And that was just a general discussion, not specific legal advice. We don't give specific legal advice on these lives. If you need, if you have an actual legal question, reach out lawyer, you know, at gmail.com. Ivory, is it possible they didn't read Jennifer's letter because they are saving it for closing? Am I mistaken or did they admit it as evidence, but choose not to read it? FYI, my brother looks like your twin, also an injury lawyer. Hey, it must be a thing. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't have read it multiple times. I just, I can't see the strategy angle for that personally. Shauna Coles, you can look up evidence on court websites. However, it hasn't been updated since yesterday. I just checked. Thank you, Shauna. If anybody does find it, send it to me. If you find any court documents that we've talked about or answer questions, go ahead and send it to me. I'll take a look at it. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Tragos Law. Follow me there. Karen Meyer, Young, do jurors know the difference between sustained objections and overruled? Usually they can pick it up, but it's not like explained to them. But, I mean, the judge says, sustained, you can't answer, overruled, go ahead, you can answer. So sometimes it's obvious. But, no, I don't think it's explained to them. In my jurisdiction, it's not. J.J. Doe, was Howell's depot weak because Howell or because Hurd's Cross did not ask her about the affidavit enough foundation to impeach the statement? Also, was Howell complaints at the end of the depot to J.D.'s team? I think it was the Amber's team, but I don't know. Why would that part be kept in? I think it was the Amber's team, but, again, there was not a lot of context brought in. And, yeah, it was either – not enough foundation laid and crossed to impeach her with it. She didn't have her full depot taken, meaning Whitney uh, heard. So maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe there was too much hearsay. Maybe the judge found it unreliable, but I didn't hear the letter slash email come in. Nina Molina, thank you. AB is a new member. Spiral Elixir. JD's team asked Howell during the depot if she still stood by her declaration and email in the letter. So why ask it if you weren't going to allow it into evidence? to pique the interest of the jury? I don't know. Because she said, you know, she wanted to keep Whitney from basically lying or doing something wrong. So maybe they're just trying to connect inferences here for the jury. Megan Laporta, do judges specialize civil versus criminal? They rotate, I should say here, they rotate from civil, uh, civil to criminal to family to, you know, probate. So different sections, they'll kind of rotate around. Linda Dickey, thank you. Chrissy Jane. This trial is almost over. What are you covering next? My after work schedule won't be the same without a lawyer you know live. Oh, I'm still going to do lives, Chrissy. Don't worry about that. We got a lot of cases coming up. I am going to recap the Dan Markell uh, case probably when it's over. Um, Lori Daybell and Chad Daybell. Uh, that's a case that's in the pipe. Uh, Pete's doing the Balwani case. Uh, we have some cases in the pipe, but really what I want is I want this page, this community, if you're subscribed, because it's going to be the subscribers of the lawyer you know, that are going to pick what cases we do. Which everyone's have the most interest. That's what I'll dive into, regardless of what I'm interested in, what I want to do. It's more fun, clearly, to me, 
when you all are interested in the comment, bringing the questions, showing up for the lives, a million times more fun for me. So I'm going to let you guys pick the content. But now we're not going to take any breaks. Uh, we might not be going every night, but we are going to do multiple lives per week, videos basically every single day. That's just kind of how we've set up our channel. No spoilers. Can you explain what happened at the end of today? Um, I did explain that already. So this is probably just an older comment. So hopefully you were here when I explained why they read that stuff into the record. If you didn't watch the replay back, I went into detail. Still can't be a member on my iPhone help. Karen, yeah, it seems like this is a thing. It has to be done. Um, it has to be done on a desktop, I think, but it's in the description to join. Rachel Moss, it's on the site. Does that mean it's in? When you say on the site, is it entered? It could be on the exhibit list, but not be entered into evidence. But if it has an actual evidence number on it, then it's entered into evidence. Send it to me. I'll take a look at it. Mystic, I heard that Jennifer Howell's house was being broken into and she is getting threats. True? I hope not. I, I haven't heard that. Beth Graham, where does the money go? I'm sending you. So YouTube takes a big cut of it. I have no idea how much I actually get, to be honest with you. I've never like looked at how it all works, but it ends up in our YouTube account like at the end of the month. Grace Hathaway, can JH have quit depot during cross from harassment and that's why they couldn't discuss further? Potentially, but this that's the hard part when we just don't know. Fable, TMZ doesn't want their sources revealed in court. Their whole business relies on being able to ensure an anonymity for their sources. I hope the source isn't revealed because it seems like a bad standard weakening free press. You know what else is a bad standard? Being able to sue a client for something their lawyer said. It's all bad precedents being set everywhere in this case, Fable. And I don't necessarily disagree with you. I think they got it out on cross. They planted in the jury's mind that Amber leaked it to TMZ. They played her depot. I think they have enough. I mean, the TMZ confirming it would also be huge. The steel curtain regarding Howell, I believe she was referring to the witness intimidation being going on with her. Tug did a video talking about it. Okay. Gina Erickson, another thank you for wise analysis. You're my favorite law tuber. Can't wait for Saturday's live. It's going to be something. That's for sure. Angela Carnazzo, Howell's home was broken into. She thinks it's witness tampering by Amber Heard and her team. Wild. Did Momoa testify and I miss it? No, he did not. Christian, thank you. AB, do you think there's a whole network of legal pros that have been educated and commenting strongly in favor of Amber Heard? I haven't seen it. Um, there are a couple of us who think she still has a chance to win, um, but I, I haven't seen it. I, I honestly don't watch a ton of it, to be honest. Teresa Kaufman, thank you. Pause of friendship. Who do you feel is winning right now? Tomorrow is my birthday. Well, happy early birthday, pause of friendship. Um, I think Johnny Depp is winning right now, but I don't think it's a slam dunk. Taylor Pasternak, I'm a UG in clinical undergrad in clinical psych, and even I do Spiegel was violating the Goldwater rule. Talk about basic ethics, not commonly violated either. Yeah, not great. Bobby Cat, does anyone else think that Dr. S may have been on meds himself? It was so bizarre. The whole like, do I have to answer that question? The judge is like, yeah, you got to answer questions. And one of the most offensive things to me, obviously, is that he said it was narcissistic to file this lawsuit. This whole lawsuit proves he's a narcissist. It's like, and millions of other people that file totally legitimate lawsuits. In fact, it's a constitutionally protected right. So to use that in a mental health diagnosis, I mean, just get out of here, guy. Like I was done with him after that. And, and that's the point is whenever, thank you, E-Good Works, um, whenever something hits close to home and hits a nerve, People cross off witnesses, which is the point of jury selections. We want to know what these jurors are going to cross witnesses off for. Ray Ray, can you imagine how unbearably smarmy Amber Heard will be if she wins? She's that way now knowing she's full of it. If she gets validated, oh my goodness, love this channel. Thank you, Ray Ray. Marissa Cardia, I'm in a civil law class and this page is so helpful for me. I will probably have questions for you sometime. I love it, Marissa. And hopefully people vote to just have like a general legal questions video at some point because I'm down for it. Paula Graham, I thought the strongest witness was the Warner Bros. president. He was in and out and crushed, but he only crushed one point is, is the thing of why maybe not. But he was strong. You're right. You're right. He was very strong for them. Zen Scout, thank you for the super sticker. Taylor Farner. As far as JD's team's burden to prove point two, during cross, Amber Heard became angry and told CV that she isn't a victim. Isn't that her saying she's lied? It's, it came out today again. 
multiple times. Amber Heard has said she's a victim, told people she's a victim. So it was more of a, of a illustration. I think we've all heard that people don't want to think of themselves as victims. That's what she meant. She wasn't actually saying I've never been a victim. Sherry Carl, what do you think uh, JD will testify about next? I'm not sure, but he can rebut anything Amber Heard said or other people said. I think they're going to finish with him, which is interesting. Megan Laporta, will Daybells be televised? I live a quarter of a mile from that courthouse, and I need the emotion to emotionally prepare. I think so, based on all the hearings and everything that's been televised so far, but we'll have to wait and see. Anne-Marie B., hey, Pete, what do you think about a lawyer word of the day on live streams? We learned so much. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. Let me know in the chat if you guys agree. Christopher Bowles, you the man. No, you the man, Christopher. Meredith Burgess is a new member. Patricia Savage, here's the full testimony, I think. Tried to send it a bit ago. I, I don't want to see the full testimony if it wasn't in trial. I appreciate you sending it to me, but I, I don't want to look at it if it hasn't come into trial. It, it's hard enough for me to even remember what comes into this trial when I'm doing all of my cases. AG, what was the purpose of the proffer at the end? To protect the record um, for appeal. And I think they wanted all the cameras and everybody to hear it and see it. That Amber Heard has been telling people about this for a long time. Leah J. Jones, thank you for the super sticker. Susie bought champagne for Saturday night. That's funny. Roxana Rousseau, they keep talking about walled minions, but Amber Heard was the one who initiated those hashtags and that backfired on her. Why focus on that? Her tweets from the time period are wild. It's a circus, but happy it's not my circus. Yeah, and I don't think they correlate those tweets to any of her damages. Melanie Casio, what does a lawyer have to be to do to be disbarred? Horrible, horrible things like steal money from their clients, screw their clients over, commit crimes, multiple crimes. I mean, some lawyers get convicted of crimes and still don't get disbarred. It really depends. It's a case by case basis. Jermaine Down, who all thinks Hicksville manager was just delightful? Claudia Hardison, I subscribed on my iPad. Might be a setting problem. Ashley Deal, what do you expect from the potential Kate Moss testimony? I think she's going to say good things about Johnny Depp. I do. Terry W., is it possible for both of them to lose or win? It's probably not possible for both of them to win, but I think it's possible for both of them to lose. Stormy Bueller, or Butler, thank you. Ashley Kimball, what, if anything, can happen to an expert witness being caught on a microphone saying he will lie in his testimony? I don't think that's what it says. Uh, this apparently happened with the the with Spiegel. Um, I don't think that's what happened. I think it was rely. I did listen to it. I think he said rely, not lie. I'd be shocked if he said lie. I just can't believe that. Roxana, they keep talking about wild minions. Okay, we read this one. NKS, lawyers have training in staying somewhat objective, but will the jury see things as dispassionately as we do? I have no idea. That's the scary part of a jury. I mean, we always tell our clients, the reason so many cases settle is we say, you don't know what these six people in our jurisdiction, six people make the decision. You don't know who they're going to be. They're not going to know you. You're putting your fate in their, hand, their hands or you have a guarantee offer right here. That's why most people end up settling. Love your channel. Just tuned in. Do you think Jennifer Howard's testimony is helpful today? Maybe a little bit, but not as much as I was hoping. I was hoping to hear because, and I'm saying hoping, not because I want Johnny Depp to win. I was hoping because it's the one piece of evidence I've seen that's not in, that hasn't come out in trial yet that she was going to impeach Whitney Heard. Kitty Starr, day six, 220. JD said Amber Heard was mad when she saw she wasn't in JD's will after posting them. Talk, why not mention it? Isn't it a great thing to bring up? And why not play the few seconds that she said she cut his finger? I'm not sure. A Crown, Jared Leto, the lawyer you know. T.S. Duff. I didn't hear. Was Ms. Moss going to testify? Apparently she's testifying tomorrow. Little Flower. Amber clearly said during testimony that she didn't hit Johnny, yet the tape she admitted, will she be looked at for perjury? No, she did say she hit Johnny in her testimony. Uh, Patricia Savage. It was one of the news channels. Okay. Bobby Cat. Just added to your YouTube account. Awesome. Um, I really appreciate your breakdown of this case. Take the missus for a nice dinner and tell her thank you for allowing us to guide us. I will do that. Bruna T is a new member. Devin's Law. Amber's lawyers are paid by our homeowner's insurance. I've heard this and I can't seem to figure out the connection. 
This didn't happen in her house or anywhere near her house. It's an intentional tort, which I don't think homeowner's insurance would cover. So I don't know if she has some other kind of, you know, professional liability insurance or something that was that would cover this, but I don't understand how that's possible. And if this was the case, then she may not have been able to choose her lawyers. Because if your insurance company's paying, usually they have the right to choose the lawyers they're gonna hire to defend you, which could be a whole other wrinkle into this whole thing. Deep State Granny. Another law tuber said they couldn't bring in JH's testimony because there was a lot of foundation and set up, uh, not a foundation set up during cross, right? That's one of the reasons I mentioned that was potentially the problem. But I don't know that we've heard the actual reason it didn't come in. Humbled Potato. Imagine if Kate Moss pulls the Uno reverse card and causes damage to JD's case. That's the risk you take. And I don't know if they have any other deposition that they could impeach her with. I really don't know. Uh, I'll tell you, the, the trailer park guy definitely could have done that because they didn't have any prior statements from him. Karen Young, $64 to repair trashed trailer. Love your channel. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, I think that showed the damage was not nearly as bad as um, they said it was. AG, can Amber Heard be called for rebuttal to confront her lies? Unlikely. Jermaine Don, probably an umbrella policy over homeowners. Potentially, but again, to cover an intentional tort would be interesting. Bruna T, why did Elaine mention that Knight tweeted bad things about Elon Musk? Would it be her point? Uh, and do you think Hamada just testified so there's no boycott related to Aquaman 2? Potentially about the second part, but I think everybody's collecting, connecting Elon Musk to Amber Heard in this case. It's kind of like if you say something bad about Marilyn Manson, maybe that's bad against Johnny Depp. So I don't really know. What was that umbrella guy policy? That's funny. I see what you did there. Wendy Beamish. Uh, what do you mean when you say impeached? It means that there's a prior inconsistent statement that you put in front of the jury and the jury has to determine which one could potentially uh, be true. And was this person lying? That's what it means to be impeached, to call into question the veracity of their testimony. Claus Pawn's Oz Adventures. Question, what are your thoughts on the end of Jennifer Howard's deposition? It felt like something important was left out and she was in fear. They've been cutting these depots so weird that anything I say is going to be speculation. There was nothing confirmed in evidence that the jury could say this is what that was, which I don't love. But I mean, I thought it was she was saying Amber Heard's lawyers were badgering her before, but I could be wrong. Devin's Law, reservation of rights maybe? I guess, but I would be shocked. And also, if that was true, I think Johnny Depp's lawyers would be able to impeach Amber Heard because she said she spent $6 million on attorney's fees. I don't know. It's not, not adding up to me. Heidi Wislang. How was Johnny able to get back into his penthouse after she changed the locks? How did the extortion bit play out? I don't know. That hasn't come out in evidence. Zachary Heater, do you think they will recall Amber Heard? Rely on Amber Heard clearly over-exaggerating on most things, then implying it fits perfectly with Dr. Curry's diagnosis? Potentially. Chatters in Wonderland, do you think the court is being made a mockery of? I wouldn't go that far. How will this affect the people's conduct in courts moving forward in your opinion? It ain't going to affect anything in this jurisdiction. I can tell you that right now. Our judges hold people to standards. They don't care what's happening in a celebrity trial in Virginia. They don't care. All right. I think we're coming down here to the end. It's almost 10 o'clock, which is usually when I like to roll it off so we can have some time to hang tonight. Um, so I'll do the outro here, and then I'll hit a couple more questions on the way out. But I appreciate everybody coming, as always. We've got some fun stuff still. Trying to lock in something really fun on Friday morning during closings. And then, of course, Saturday is when we're going to be doing the Jack Sparrow live. Um, so make sure you tune in for that. Hit the like button on your way out if you haven't already liked the, the video. And make sure you subscribe to our page if you haven't subscribed already. Linz, can they call Jennifer Howell's friend that she also sent the email to? That's like hearsay within hearsay, so I doubt it. She said he was her closest confidant. I don't see that happening. Michael Maxner. Do you think Amber Heard pushing for such an insane amount of damages is hurting her credibility in general? It's such an insane stretch. I just think it's kind of what she's done the entire trial, which is exaggerate everything, which is not a good look. Kelsey, this might be a dumb question because I might be missing something and I may be asking it really stupidly, but do they announce impeachment? So no, they don't say I'm impeaching you. But a lot of times they've said this was improper impeachment or judge, I'm just trying to impeach the witness. So the jury has heard that phrase, but they don't explain what it is and tell the jury they can do that in closing and say, you heard me impeach them over and over again. I've done that when I talk about the credibility of witnesses where I put that jury instruction and say, 
You can determine whether the witness is being honest. And think about all the times I impeached them with their prior inconsistent statements. You can try to explain that to the jury in closing, but they don't make like a formal announcement. The judge doesn't announce it. Thank you, Susie Wilson. And we're going to end with prayers to all the victims in Texas. Um, we'll be keeping track there, see if there's any, you know, funds we can donate to or things we can do for them or awareness we can be, we can bring to them. Um, because, you know, it's terrible what happened to them and, uh, we feel for them and we'll, they'll definitely be in our prayers for the days, months, and years to come. Um, I appreciate everybody joining me today, talking about this stuff and getting through another day of trial. We're coming close to the end. Um, it's starting to feel like, you know, we could see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I appreciate everybody being with me tonight. Like the video on your way out. Let me know what you think in the comments and get in the community page. Find us on Twitter and Instagram at Tragos Law because we have a lot of fun on there talking about this stuff. But that's a wrap for tonight. As always, you all are the best. Thanks for being here. And we're going to finish with Doug D's question. I feel between the WB president and the social media expert crushed Amber's counterclaim. They definitely crushed the damages, but there will be more rebuttal tomorrow. We'll see if Johnny Depp continues this uh, positive momentum. But that's all we got. You all are the best. I'll see you tomorrow night, 8.30 again, Eastern time. That's it.